Welcome to Paley Front Row, part of the Paley at Home series presented by City. Women have to overcome more obstacles to reach the top. It's made them fiercely determined and more innovative. Just because they can navigate the obstacles doesn't mean they should have to. City is committed to investing in opportunities for 10 million women globally by 2025. Let's find out as much as we possibly can from this amazing, amazing cast and crew. Join me in welcoming Andrew Fleming, director and executive producer. Hi. <laughs> Mr. Lucien Laviscount, who plays Alfie. <laughs> Ashley Park, who plays Mindy Chen. <laughs> Lily Collins, who is also an executive producer and star, Emily Cooper. <laughs> Kami Raza, who plays Kami. Lucas Bravo, who stars as Gabrielle. <laughs> and Darren Starr, the show's writer, creator, uh, executive producer, all the things. <laughs> well, hello, hello, hello. And congratulations on an amazing season two. Um, I want to start with you, Darren. Hey. Ah, you, the man of many hats um, and have been for a long time. And you are kind of like the master of location, I would say. I mean, the resume, 90210, Melrose Place, Sex in the City, and just like that. All of that. Um, when it comes to this season, um, coming back to Paris, what did you want to do with this other main character of the show, of Paris? What did you want to show? I mean, we're always thinking about how we can show off Paris. It's, it's not hard to make Paris look amazing because it, it, it is it's sort of wherever you look, wherever you point the camera. And, you know, we have, I mean, we always want the story to drive the locations. The locations don't drive the story, but we have some, I think some really beautiful um, locations lined up for season three mm -hmm. in France, not just in Paris. Um, Andy has showed us some, has gone out and scouted some amazing things already. So um, <laughs> we've got, you know, I, I think we just discovered these like hidden spots in Paris. They're just so beautiful, sort of. Um, and it's just like a, just this fantastic stage in which to sort of like play out the lives of all these characters. I love it. Well, you started it um, hinting at season three, so I'm just going to go there because people Ooh. have questions, right? Um, we have this love triangle that's kind of turned into a love square. <laughs> right, right. Uh, between the characters. And I'm wondering, what can you tell us? What can you tease about <laughs> what to expect for season three? Um, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and it is a love square, and it, like, you know, it makes my head hurt to think about it. Um, but I think, you know, Emily always wants to do the right thing. I'll, I'll say that for her. She really does. She, she, like, she has a lot of passion. She also has, like, you know, two really amazing men mm -hmm. in her life. And, um, and Woo! Gabriel. <laughs> <laughs> one of them at the moment is not available. Mm -hmm. Well, two amazing men in season three. Well, two, the, you know, the men are always gonna be there. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Well, I'm, I'm gonna kick this over to one of the newest amazing men in her life, Lucien. How are you? Welcome, yeah. welcome, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, if I could turn red, I'd turn red right now. <laughs> Thank you so much for being so lovely, guys. What, what was it like? What was the, the welcome brigade like for this show? It's, it's super established, beloved, season one, just smash hit. What was it like walking into that? 
I was like... With an attitude, with your an attitude. character. Oh, <laughs> yeah. attitude, but with an attitude. It came in strong, but um, <laughs> I was so nervous. And um, obviously, I felt like the new kid at school. And um, I went in for my first read-through, and honestly, Lily just gave me a big hug, and she said, welcome to the family. <laughs> After that, it was just all like, yeah, go time. Yeah. Um, yeah, honestly, my feet still haven't touched the ground, and I just feel so, so welcomed by these amazing people, to be honest. I'm really nervous, by the way. This is like, oh, oh, yeah. Come on. I'm really, I don't know. Really nervous. Oh, sweet, sweet, sweet. Yeah, cool. Well, in-person events are kind of a new thing, so I, I, don't, I don't blame you. Um, tell me about the chemistry between you and <laughs> Emily Cooper, or, or Lily, how you, how you and Lily built I leave? that <laughs> chemistry. <laughs> because it is, it is there. Um, honestly, for me, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll go ahead and say it. Um, Lily's like one of the most incredible women to work with, who is a boss, and she's like captains this team so uh, with such a kind of demeanor that it, it runs through everyone, the cast, the crew, and um, yeah, uh, nervous as anything to be honest. But um, yeah, she makes you feel super comfortable and super cozy, and just yeah, you can play and have fun, and yeah, I'm really I thankful mean, to. Her. He. You know, he, he did an audition, he sent a tape in, Darren showed it to me, and right away it was just so apparent that that was, and Darren said this, you know, it, that was Alfie. Like, without any, any conversation, we just saw it, and then we jumped on a Zoom and just had a conversation for like 45 minutes, all of us, and um, you, you felt weirdly comfortable, which is so crazy to hear that you were super nervous. Even on day one, I was like, He's like the new guy and he is so cool. Like, what is going on? And every single person on the crew made a point from the hair and makeup department to the grips to the cameraman. Everyone was like, this new guy is so cool and so nice. And it was, it's true because he came on. <laughs> it's true. I mean, it's one thing for the cast to say that because he kind of has to be nice to us. But, you know, <laughs> but to be nice to everybody on set and to fit right in, it was like, it was like you'd been there before. It's true. It's time to you, though. Thank you. I, I'm really turning red now. <laughs> <laughs> you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Your ears, yeah. Yeah, yeah really, for gone, sure. Gone burning up, uh, burning up. He, he's nice. He knows how to rip a shirt off on command. He's just all the things. <laughs> all the things. Well, <laughs> Lily, I want to go over to you. Um, season two. As I said before, you are, you are in Paris. This is, this is happening. You are doing this. What was it for you that made this season come alive? The behind the scenes, the filming aspect, or in, within your character, within the script? I think allowing Emily to settle more into the city, like you said, and um, from the get-go, you know, Darren and Andy, we had had these conversations about um, making France come alive in new ways in the season and incorporating more of the French language. You know, Emily's really trying her hardest. <laughs> um, season two, more with the French language and having that be more part of the show and getting to explore new areas of France, obviously getting to go to Saint-Tropez and, and really having these female friendships um, bloom and blossom in, in different ways. But I was just excited to go back to a season you know, during the pandemic when we were all missing each other and kind of human connection so much, to be able to go back to shoot a show that felt so um, genuinely fun and positive the first time around. We didn't know it would come out during a pandemic when everyone needed to travel and smile and remember what <clears throat> fun feels like. You know, the show got to come out and then to re-enter that world when we were craving it most was such a gift. Yeah. and um, to do it safely, and uh, it just was a beautiful experience. And then to find out we get to keep doing it um, was, was a real testament, I think, to the camaraderie between the cast and crew. You are so right. I mean, <laughs> when I first watched it, I was like, I need Paris, I don't want to see a mask, I just need life and color, and you guys gave it. And I think <laughs> that's just, of course, part of, of the amazing appeal. But um, I want to ask you about this one line that Camille actually says to you um, in season two, where she's, I think, sniffing your Laveau perfume that's specifically for you. <laughs> and she's like, you know, it's very obvious, and 
what is it, Rengard or whatever it is <laughs> on the surface. Basic, yeah. <laughs> but like once you sniff it, there is that, that deeper factor, there, that interesting something. And perfect metaphor for Emily Cooper. Uh, but I want to know what is it about Emily for you? What do you love about Emily? And then what's something that's like, if you were her friend, you'd be like, stop that, <laughs> please. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Uh, I love so many things about Emily. I did from the second I read the pilot. But one thing that sticks out and is something that I admire in a lot of the women I've had the pleasure of working with in front of or behind the camera is that they're unapologetically in love with what they do. And there's a deep romance with their job and with being good at their job and, and not apologizing for that. And I think she is constantly seeking out advice or help and isn't afraid to admit when she needs it or if she's wrong, but she's also not ashamed of being driven and passionate. And I think that's a really bold girl woman to look up to. And I, and I have a lot of those, in, including these two women here, um, and men, of course, but I'm speaking as a, as a woman, as a woman, about <laughs> Emily. Um, but I just think it's really important to showcase that and, and to have strength and also to know when you need help. And asking for help isn't a weakness, it's a strength in and of itself. And I feel like Emily really embodies that. And <laughs> something that I tell her to stop. Hmm. I, I would say just, just oh, it's like, it's like the scene with us on the bench. Which or one? She, the, the me, one of the many. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, there's a lot of that. No, it's like when she says, like, stop oh, yeah. saying, Figure out I, what I, want. I, I should, should, mm -hmm. should. It's like, what do you want to do? What do you want? What is it that you want? Not what other people want you to do. And it's something that actually I myself find myself in the same situation where I'm like, well, I should. And I, like, have your slash Mindy's voice in my head doing like, stop thinking that way. And so I'd want to like tell her to get out of her own head sometimes. Nice. Well, that is a, a great segue to you, Ashley. I want, yes. <laughs> <laughs> my entrance of <laughs> <laughs> I love a slow clap. But um, Ashley, I, I want to know about this relationship a little bit more because I love the fact that it's a reciprocal friendship relationship on a show where it's not you know, Emily's character, or, or the Emily character taking, 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 and not giving anything back. You have a lot going on in this show, yeah. and a lot juggling, and she feeds that as well. So, how, one, is that what attracted you to this script? And also, um, does that flow off screen as well? Like, what is the, the relationship between you and Lily? Well, let me tell you. No, <laughs> no um, and very genuinely, um, what we all see in the pilot episode, that was the, my audition scene. That was the only thing I had of Mindy. And I immediately was attracted to this genuine um, warmth and connection between these two women, both out of their comfort zone, both fish out of water, and just really taking each other in and listening to each other and deciding together that they were going to be in each other's lives. Um, and it's, it may sound cliche, but very much so. I think Mindy and Emily really mirror what me and Lily's friendship has been like and is like, oh God, I can't stop crying like right now. It's the beginning. <laughs> um, but very much, and I, I'm very inspired by the characters and I think they inspire us. And I, I hope that we bring in some of our friendship to these characters because I think it's so cool to see these two women um, trying to figure out who they are and not for a second doubting their support and their, their hearts for each other. And I think um, the reason we get to see you know, Mindy open up in the second season at all is because she's finally find, found a home in another person in this foreign place. And I think that in, it was, you know, season one was a lot of Mindy being there for Emily and then Mindy moves in with Emily and that rent free. So that was super <laughs> nice. Yeah, she found a home in a lot of ways. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yeah, but I think, you know, their friendship is the kind of friendship that I, I value a lot and I try to, you know, um, have in my own life. And I, and I think we've both been very moved by a lot of people around the globe really connecting to that kind of friendship and being like, it, it can all be great. It can all be like supportive. And I think what's also great, and we do this in real life, is um, it, we're able to comfort and call each other out at the same time. Really say, here's a mirror, like here, here's some truths. Um, this is what um, I think you should do, but I also believe in you and to make your own decision. And I and I think you're the best. And I think she's the best. I think so. she's the best. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> like yes, find that. Find a friend who will 
keep it real with you, but also keep your secrets. And I think that's what you Yeah, hear. sometimes it's hard, but There's you know. To keep. But uh, one more thing uh, I have to ask you about Monsalio, this song <gasps> that you say, it's, it's an original song. Yeah. It was a moment. It was a whole moment. An original song, right? Is, it, is this one? Because you do a lot of covers on the show. So yeah. how did that come about? And, and what was that like for you? It's the first original song we've done. And I also think it's it's really rare to have an original song written for a character and um, in in a, in a show. I, I think we were filming the birthday episode when Camille's like, bullshit, um, <laughs> uh, this season. And Darren came up to me and he was like, Ashley, um, what about an original song this season? And I was like, oh my gosh, Darren, that would be amazing. I don't write music though, do you? <laughs> and so, um, we kind of put our heads together and I had, it's a, you know, it's, we did do this entire second season over a pandemic. And so um, a friend of mine who I'd met only over Zoom over the pandemic, Freddie Wexler, he was actually just Grammy nominated for a song he wrote for Justin Bieber and Ariana Grande. And um, we kind of, we, we recruited him. He said he would love to collaborate. And we wrote this whole, we worked with Andy and Darren and the writers, and we came up with this song together over Zoom and FaceTime. And I think what was so cool about that was that, um, I come from the world of theater and Broadway where music is used to propel the story forward. And I think that I was so excited that the lyrics of the song, like you kind of feel like um, it's, there, there's double meaning to everything, right? Because you, you're in the story with Mindy and Benoit and stuff. And it was just, it was a real joy to sing. I've never had a song written for me to sing. And um, Lucian was there when I was recording it. And also just getting to do it with like Luca and Lucian and Lily in the room on that day, I haven't, sung live since before the pandemic. Um, and so it was wow. just really special. And I'm just thank you sing so much tonight. for listening to me. <laughs> <laughs> They're, they're all actually going to do a cover of Montsoleil in the next season. Oh, yeah. So there's your teaser. <laughs> I love it. Well, I have to bring it to you, Andrew, and ask about the scenes. Because that was one of the scenes that I really loved in terms of the shot and, and how you know, it expanded. You saw people not even paying attention, like whatever, and then kind of just coming and you have the dance scene and all of it, it just, you know, struck up the fire. So what has been your favorite scene to shoot? And what's been your most difficult scene to shoot and really pull it out well, of these guys? I would say that one's nominated for both of those categories because <laughs> I love that scene because it's, all of this behavior is happening during the song and people are making decisions and looking at each other and, and Gabrielle is looking at Emily and Emily's looking at, uh, uh, what's her name? Alfie. Alfie. <laughs> and, um, and, and things are happening during the songs. It's like this kind of visual storytelling. And, um, and I just love that song. I'm still not sick of it. I've done you know, music videos and you get really sick of songs. I still love hearing that song. Um, but it was challenging because it was very hot in that room. And the, all of those extras in that room were all being asked to be performers and be you know, distracted at the beginning and get into it at the end. But it was really, it was really magic. I mean, I just thought like, oh, I, I love this scene. But um, I love other scenes uh, in this episode. This episode was a lot. Um, <laughs> there are a number of scenes that I just, I, I love in it. So uh, I, they're like my children, I can't decide. <laughs> I love it. Well, uh, Camille and Gabrielle, we are going to delve into you in a quick second, but this just in, I have to ask Mr. Uh, Darren Starr here, do you have anything, any news that you want well, to break about season three? News. About so season I can three. say one thing about season three, that Lucian is coming back to season three as a regular. Oh, a regular. <laughs> a regular. A regular. <laughs> what? Promoted. There you go. Promotion. Really? You're a great actor. <laughs> Are you free? Woo! Yes! <laughs> Are you available? Wow. Right. I will discuss the dates later, okay? <laughs> And we're gonna, right. Because we're going to be we're we're filming season three in June, June. starting in June. So, are you check free? Your calendar. Yeah. I'm free. <laughs> You're free. <laughs> okay, you free. <laughs> He'll be <laughs> there. <laughs> I want to hook everyone. <laughs> wow. 
Wow. <laughs> That's great. We're going to take a short commercial break so he can digest this amazing information. No, I'm awesome. Congratulations. Jeez oh. Louise. <laughs> 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 Which means, which means, where I'm going is going to get even more complicated. What is it, is the flame there? Is it not? Is it like, oh, like in, in your opinion, like in the notes, off the script, on the side, like, <laughs> what is happening is the question. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Lucas. <laughs> I, think, I think that's a fair question because, um, you always see them fighting most of the time. So uh, we were actually asking ourselves, what are they doing back together? Right. Uh, <laughs> Wait, in the, in the wine country, they were taking that beautiful walk to the vineyard. Yeah. They it's, look it's so all, happy together. It's all summed up I to mean, uh, this walk in the country. <laughs> <laughs> Our relationship lot, is... There's something happening off screen. No, though. no, of course there's love off screen, but it's, you know, since we're telling mostly the story of, of Emily, we, we see all the things that make us... Uh, Drift apart. Yep. Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Kevin, what, what, what is your take? Is, is this, I, I mean, it almost can feel at times like a sister-brother relationship, and then you see that look, and it's like, oh, he really loves her. So, so out, bird's eye view, outside looking in, what do you think? About what? About that relationship. <laughs> About my relationship with Gabriel? Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess like every relationship, you try to make things work, you know? And so we shall do it together, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Tight lip. Okay, we're only getting a little bit of news. I, <laughs> are you convinced? But you know, I think if, if they, they discussed in, the, in, in last season how they have had fights and they mm-hmm. come back together, they've had time off, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, I, I feel, if I can... Yes, something here. Um, I think that uh, Camille really, really loves Gabrielle and feels like they're 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 meant to be together. And I and I think that. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that Gabrielle has a long history with Camille. And <laughs> I mean. So, you know. I mean, let's just put a wall. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> we, we keep forgetting we're not our characters. We haven't done any in-person panels or anything. This no, is like this our is first time. the first time we've all been together talking about the show. So we're like, wait, what do we? Yes! Yeah. Amazing. You guys, you guys are amazing, by the way. It's, it's so invigorating to uh, step on a stage with people uh, clapping. I've, I've never thought in my life that I would experience that. I feel like a rock star for a second. Aww, okay. Thank you. Well, well, one person who has you guys just down the aisle already, babies in the carriage in her mind, is uh, your mom on the show, (laughs) who did some maneuvering. I couldn't figure out what was going to happen, especially when you all welcomed Emily back into the family business, essentially. And I I I had to check, like, did her mom make her husband, like, cut his finger off? Like, was that part of the plan? (laughs) Like, there was a lot happening. But what did you think when you saw that in the script about, you know, there were going to be other people helping in this situation that you have going on? Uh, I mean, of course, my mom is coming uh, to get my man back and everything. But I think she doesn't understand Emily, but still needs her for the company, you know? So she tries to entertain us, I guess, Mm -hmm. with the finger and everything. I mean, that was a long day. Not gonna that, lie. Was, <laughs> that was an accident. <laughs> that was definitely an accident. Awesome. But, it was, but, it, but Emily, you know, it was Emily's idea to sort of... I think those scenes with the parents are some of the most fun and funny to shoot mm. because there's so much subtext. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then with your brother, and I mean, my God. I mean, the right? Yeah. He is like a the gem. Brother. He is so sweet and he's so funny. And it, weren't we his first job? His first English speaking job. Yes, you're gonna say Season that. one was his first wow. English speaking job. And I'm like, you're gonna go places. You're amazing. And then season two, he remember he was like shooting an all nighter and then and then drove out to shoot a day with us and then drove back mm. to go shoot on another show. And I'm like, anyway, long story short, this the scenes with your family are some of the most ridiculous, amazing scenes <laughs> for Emily because she's like, 
what the, what am I doing? Like, I shouldn't be here, <laughs> but I also need to be here because it's my job. It's like the perfect moment of like, if you imagine Emily walking to the door, pivoting, turning around, like, and then go, and then like, there's so much confusion and those scenes allow for Emily mm. to not have everything go right, which is what you need. You can't have everything go right for Emily because it wouldn't feel real. And having those kind of, moments where she makes a choice to leave that shows morally where she stands. Like you have to give her the opportunity to make those choices. And those scenes with her parents are just like the perfect comedic and like dramatic mix of those. And they feel so entrenched in France and, and, and that whole scene. So I, I wanna ask you, Lucas and Camille, what is your take on the Paris of Emily in Paris? you know, having known the real Paris. Like, how, how does the show do it? So we get all the tricky questions. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I'm watching. <laughs> I, I think most of it is, is true because what most people don't know is that Darren used to, used to live in Paris in his uh, young I spent, years. I sp spent time there. But not like you this have. Is a, not like you it's have. a very mysterious person. You need to person. keep answering this question. <laughs> okay, okay. But he speaks French and he has like a vision of what he experienced. Yeah. And I think it's a love letter to Paris. And uh, of course it's a comedy, so you have to, you know, emphasize on, on the little cliches that make us uh, so charming and, and <laughs> so annoying at the same time. Um, but there's truth in everything. I really, I really recognize everything. And the people in, in Paris that complained about it is just, it's always hard to see the truth, you know? It's denial. Mm. Um, I think it's funny. I think we're funny people, you know? We smoke cigarettes coming out of the gym. We, like, drink wine in the morning. Uh, we're just... Who's gonna save Luca? <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of how the city looks, it does, it, look, it looks like that. I mean, it's uh, refreshing to see Paris this way, yeah. you know? Uh, from your point of view, because... The world of Darren Star is always, you know, so so refreshing. I've, I'm a huge Sex and the City fan, and and you know, uh, it's it feels good to have this this point of view, uh, an American point of view, and uh, to see this fresh perspective on Paris. It's it's beautiful. Only you know how to film a city the way you do, and uh, and make it a character of its own. Um, so yes, thank you, Darren. Thank you. And then, by the way, and and Andy. Andy, Andy looks at the city and makes it more beautiful, honestly, than I, than I even think it can be, really. Well, I, I think the show, especially season one, was very much from an American perspective, because if you grew up in it's LA, LA's perspective, if you come from the valley and you go to Paris, everything is beautiful, and, <laughs> and you don't notice the garbage, and you don't notice the little mini malls or the McDonald's, you just see the beautiful churches and the beautiful little streets, and you want to see that. So the show was, was truly an American point of view, and... Um, I remember French people saying, you, you made our city look so pretty. I kept yeah. like, it's pretty cute. It's not that hard. <laughs> but we just left out all the, the ugly bits. Lucas, have you picked up anything in the kitchen? I'm wondering, because we have all of these very sexy scenes of, of chopping and, and tossing and drizzling, and I, I can't come up with any other words, well, but. What's, what's drizzling? <laughs> drizzling? Drizzling is like to drizzle. Oh, drizzling, okay. sauteing, give me more. But you do all these things and look darn good doing them, but have you picked up anything in, in the kitchen from playing a chef? Well, I was a chef before the show. Oh. Yes. Well, I did not know these things. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's funny because uh, we were talking about this yesterday, but I had a, a stunt double for the chopping scenes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some people jump from buildings and I have someone to cut my vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> it was one shot, it was just one shot. He goes like, ch -ch 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 like that. Yeah. It's but I got, I got, you know, my, my, the, my ego kicked in and I was like, this, please, you sit back, I'll, I'll chop my vegetables. <laughs> and he had like all the Plaza Ateneo chef suit with the stripes and everything. And I was like, and I was trying to do it as fast as possible, sweating. And I, 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 I remember asking the director to really make the connection between my hands and my face so people would actually understand <laughs> that. This is me. <laughs> <laughs> So there's, there's a scene like this when I'm cooking for Lily, I'm doing like um, um, leeks. Leeks, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, 
And that I was doing, but then there's another scene where I'm like, you know, really spitting on the chopping and it's, it's not me. I, I, <laughs> I told him, you, you, you can go. You, you're not supposed, when you're shooting, you're not supposed to hurt yourself. You're not supposed to go skydiving or mm-hmm. chopping vegetables. And uh, <laughs> so I told him, you go, I, I, I have a season to finish. <laughs> I'm picturing you watching the episode back like, that's me. That's not me. <laughs> Those are my hands. You can tell the, the hands are a little rough, you know, the oh. cream is not here. <laughs> For the trained eye. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is um, another character that we haven't talked about, and that is the fashion. And that is something that me personally, um, was what caught me. And now I'm just hooked, the storyline, all of it. But the Passion, oh my God. Woo! So, I'm gonna kick this to you, Emily. Favorite look from season two? Favorite look, if you had to pick one and put it in your closet, if it's not there already, favorite look from season two? Uh, and why, <laughs> and why? I don't, I, it, there's like not one. Did I ever tell you that I liked one more? <laughs> the red one was really No, I know, that's what I was gonna say. Okay. Um, no, I mean, I don't know how often I'd wear it, but I do remember when I had the fitting for the red Versailles dress. It yes. was- Yes! I was hoping you said that. Because it, there were multiple options and some of them were more subdued and I was like, oh, when do you get to go to Versailles and shoot in Versailles and it's Emily, so. Even if I want to wear a bold color, I feel like Emily really wants to wear a bold color. And they're like, well, it's going to be all pastels. I was like, red is perfect. Um, and that dress is just, it's, she, you know, she went to the opera in black, season one. And season two, it was like, go to Versailles, you wear red. Um, and it was just such a, a moment where it was a total collaboration between um, Patricia and Marilyn and, uh, and myself. And it was just a magical moment. Like, I'll never forget sitting on in the Hall of Mirrors, like, just waiting to shoot wow. with slippers on, waiting to shoot in a chair like this, like, with a, you know, coffee in this dress, looking, going, where are we? Like, what are we doing? <laughs> um, and it's interesting, because I grew up just being obsessed with fashion. I wanted to be a designer. I used to go to flea markets and, like, go through piles and, like, grab stuff and wear whatever it is that I could find. And to have fashion dictate and help guide, like you say music does on the stage, the emotions of this show, it's, it's, every character has such a voice and has such a voice within their fashion choices and that's a testament to Marilyn and Patricia creating a, a language with their clothes. Um, yeah, yes. <laughs> Award winning fashion. Um, but I have such fond memories of emotions with the outfits. Mm. Like, You'd never know it, but in the last scene, um, where I'm wearing all like seahorses and fish on, you know, under the sea, and there's many layers, it was like, okay, Emily feels like she's drowning. She's not able to get her head above water, so it's a fish under, you know, fish out of water experience in Paris. She's drowning. Then there are seahorses, and they mate for life. So she thinks she's found her mate for life, and she goes to tell him. And then it's like she has to put the extra layer on and protect herself again. I mean. You're never gonna know all that, but I did. <laughs> I'm like, that is helping guide me through this scene. But there's just so much emotion in every outfit, and I think all of us feel that way, and, and we're very much a part of the deciding factor of what, what jewelry we get to wear. And Camille has, I mean, you really have like championed so many unknown designers, and you that, brought so many a- unknown designers to their attention, which is so impor- important. And, and that's so amazing. And, and Ashley has done the same and she's brought amazing pieces out of her own wardrobe to incorporate. And it's just an amazing um, opportunity to be able, and she has said this before, so I'm not trying to steal it, no. to showcase uh, voices that need to be heard because it's a very hard platform. Well, I, was, I was going to ask, I was gonna go there, Camille and, and Ashley, your favorites because I mean, the moments are, are happening. I, 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 like, I, it's just, uh, I guess Emily has such a, a very just bright and, and airy take on, on fashion and, and yours is just really sexy, kind of subdued, edgy, and then yours is just super fun, Ashley. So, so I'm wondering, wh- what's been a favorite of yours from this season? And then also Ashley. Um, I would say the Yves Saint Laurent dress that I'm wearing, the heart-shaped one. Uh, it does the magnificent silhouette, and it's very Parisian, with this oversized masculine leather jacket 
Mm -hmm. uh, I love the, the silhouette that it creates. Yes. What about you, Ashley? Oh, from this season, the one that I wore? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it was my favorite to wear, but it was definitely one of my favorite costumes of all time just because of the effort and the thought that went into it. But um, the costume I wear for the, the drag performance for Dynamite mm -hmm. in the first Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> That's the, the half black, half white. Yeah, that was the, Patricia reached out to me. I think, you know, you, you guys had written the first episode. We knew there was going to be a number in the drag um, club. And we did those fittings. Like, we, they really worked on it. She um, collaborated with the Blondes in New York and collaborated on that costume. We had a bunch of different versions. I couldn't pee in it when um, <laughs> we wore it. And, like, Mindy's in that for a lot of the episode. Yeah, you were so Madame into pee -pee Yeah, I was sewn into it. It was a little, yeah. But, I mean, I, I'd never, you know, they designed stuff for J-Lo, and I love J-Lo, you know? So, like, I, that's one of the coolest costumes I've gotten to wear. And my hair and makeup person, Carol, she, um, you know, we would spend four hours every time we put that on. She did so many trials wow. of how to do the makeup on either side, and just the effort that our crew puts in is crazy. And you That was the first time I met Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Was, was in that outfit. So I was like, hi, how's it going? And I'm super nervous, first day, whatever. I'm like, hi, how's it going? And then you said hello again after. I had, take, I had taken the whole, the whole costume yeah. off and my makeup and everything, and I was like, oh, good, have a, have a good fitting. Like, oh, I'll nice see to you. And he was like, oh, it's nice to meet you. I'm Lucian. And I was like, we met. We had a whole conversation. But I, like, <laughs> I did not mean that. <laughs> yeah. like, whoa. I was like, oh, I had a mustache, half of one earlier. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, guys. Well, OK. Camera's off. You guys are in Paris. I want to just go down the line. What has been one of your favorite nothing's rolling moments from working on this show? And I'll start with you, Andrew. <laughs> well, oh, some I can't tell you about. But I had never been to Versailles before uh, we shot there. And I, I hadn't read the script, but I'd heard that we were going to shoot at Versailles. So I arranged to go there with our amazing production designer, Anne Sabel. We should just, like, acknowledge her. <laughs> she's, she's so good. Um, but I got to go there with her and this one woman who works at Versailles, and while it was closed, and got to go through the Hall of Mirrors by myself, and went outside, and they turned the fountains on for me. Uh, Woo! It's like the what? craziest experience. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I didn't tell you about, I didn't tell you guys about that, but it was amazing. Um, and then to go shoot there also, but that was just a, something I did uh, off the books. It was, that was amazing. What about you, Lucien? My favorite? Moment, moment off of, camera. Oh, off camera. Um, I probably, I probably see the first read through. And I think, did you sing in the first read? Do you have a G-rated moment off camera? G-rated uh -uh. moment. Uh, <laughs> I, I have one, I don't think it's <laughs> <laughs> like, Can I say it? Yeah, you can have a thing. Come on, it's Kaylee Beth. Okay. What? I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> Sorry. No, don't. No, okay. No. Um, <laughs> you know, I had my birthday in, uh, in June, and everyone just came out and celebrated with me, and I was really, really thankful for that. Because mm. I was in a city by myself. I was literally Lucy in Paris alone. Oh, you were both Geminis. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Geminis unite. Any Geminis out there? <laughs> nice. <laughs> Bad news. Yeah, I think my birthday, tell them about my birthday in Paris, that was, that was pretty special for me. Birthday in Paris, okay, we'll take that, we'll take that. We're gonna do a rapid fire. I'll just do the, pick a few. I'll do a quick cheesy one. Honestly, like, every moment off camera, you know, I, like, Paris feels like a second home now, and I, like, we all have different friendships and relationships with each other. We all have amazing memories, and we've all, like, grown so much as people throughout this, too. And, like, the amount of walk and talks we've done, like, for real, like, throughout, like, the Tuileries and around the Louvre, like, and ex experiencing Paris in such a different way second season than we did the first time, because the second time there are no tourists, and it was, you know, a closed city. So it's just, like, like what you see up there, that, like, magic and that joy is, like, is very, very genuine, yeah. Um, when we were shooting in Saint Tropez, we did a night shoot. I did a night shoot with these girls, and we went to bed at like five or six in the morning. And then the next day, I woke up at noon, and my lovely Mike and O'Reilly, who do my hair and makeup, got me ready for my first wedding dress fitting because I was planning my wedding at the same time as shooting season two. And so uh, Ashley was there, and she came in and sprinkled rose petals down the hallway of my room so that I could feel as though. Uh, 
I mean that it was something to always remember because I was um, not able to have a it, COVID. It's we, you know it was like yeah. a weird way to um, have wedding preparations, and so I will forever remember that as incredibly special for my life. How sweet. Yeah. What about you, Camille? Um, I don't know. It's home, so. It's home, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's home, you different. know, so for me it's like daily life, but I guess when we were in Saint-Tropez, I mean, the hotel was very nice, so <laughs> I had a lovely time, I would say. Kept the robe? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> what are you, Lucas? At that moment where I was when I was saxophoning on the on a thing on the pool, oh. that was me in the in the. Oh. No. <laughs> that was his other stuff double. I tried. You really? I, th I think all in all, to just just um, the realization that we're a family now, and uh, it feels like you know, a school, uh, high school, college, university, mm -hmm. and every time we find each other, there's a new nuance to our personalities and our, our relationships, because we go and experience the world for a year through the prism of our own perception. And when we get back together, we just like, you know, have a, a measurement, a sense of what the world has been since we were apart. And we create that new bubble. And, uh, and we just inject all this in, in the season. And it's, it's, it feels like family, professional family. And I never thought I would experience that in my uh, professional career. What comes out on screen. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we have some questions that we are going to take from the crowd in a second, but we have a couple that we have here already from the Paley Center members. So I'm going to start with this one, a question from member Nancy Sanchez. The fashions on the show are incroyable. I don't know if I said that right. How much input does the cast have in their wardrobe style, and do they get to keep anything? So we talked about how much input you guys have, which is a lot, but do you get to keep anything is a good question. <laughs> I don't know how much of it we could pull off, like, in real life. You know? <laughs> I, I could try. I'd make a, I would make a hard effort if I got to keep some of those yeah, things. Yeah, 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 the suits and stuff, yeah. Yeah, not, not, we got to talk about that. Seems oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine with me. I kept, oh. I kept the pan. You, you kept something? Yeah, the, the pan. I still have it. Oh, the pan. Oh, yeah. with, oh. with, you with your fake pan. initials. Yeah. Okay, the pan. Another one from Paley Center member Julie Owen. What does the cast enjoy doing in Paris when they're not shooting? Anything unusual? So we talked about your individual, you know, best moments, but have you done anything as a cast that's unusual? <laughs> oh, on season one, I mean, this, this is the only thing that came to mind. Season one we did, you, Samuel, and I did an Uber Eats experience. Oh, it was no, it was Airbnb experience. Just kidding, it was Uber Airbnb Eats experience. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, maybe there's a version of that too. Yeah. Um, and we went and made macaroon. Uh, yes, you yeah. brought it to the set. Yes, we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, no one believed us things. that we would be able to do it. And we went and we went like with a, a pastry chef and joined a random class and made macaroons yeah. just for fun. And they were really good. They were and really good. Honestly, yeah. a lot of this stuff, that we, the off camera, I feel like there's an, like an HBO show that's like what we do. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> yeah. it's, we can't talk about some stuff, but yeah. Wait, but, wait these macaroons though, were, were, they, were they good, Lucas? I feel like you would know better than anyone. Yes. They were good. Okay. All right, that. they were good. He has to say. The chef said they were good. Yeah. Yes. Well, Wait, they were the, the same ones from your cooking lessons, the one we got at Rap? No, no. no. no, no, no. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, because those <laughs> were good. Those were really good. These were the, like, <laughs> mediocre at best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, I want to open it up to her right here. Yeah. Ooh. My question is for Darren. I was also, a, I'm also a big fan of Sex in the City, and Ooh. I feel like there's some tie ins with the show and Sex and the City. I, I, when I'm watching the show, it just reminds me of Sex and the City. So I, I think one of the most pivotal scenes for Carrie is when she's on that bridge. And I noticed at the end of the season, Emily's also on the bridge as well. So was that done on purpose? And will we see a tie-in with Sex and the City and I don't think <laughs> the we're, show? I don't think we're gonna see a tie-in, but I, you know, I think both of them sort of reflect my sort of passion for Paris, and I think that Carrie had an amazing, unforgettable couple episodes in Paris. Um, they're they're to me they're to me they're different worlds, but I can understand how when you that you can sort of find some 
things that kind of like rhyme between the, the, the shows a little bit. And, um, but I really see them as just, com just completely, completely different worlds. And, and I think Carrie and Emily experienced Paris in like a, you know, a very different way. Hi. Hi. Oh my God. It's an honor to be here with you. I'm from Europe, I'm from Romania, so uh, wow. it's yes. just uh, a luck to be here with you. Wow. Um, you're such an inspiration for me and for everybody from here, right? Uh, okay, so, so my question is, um, you are already so big in your career. Do you still have a goal higher than where you are right now? Like, you're the best right now. You're very, very high. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's your dream? What's your goal in life? Wow. Who's the question? Wow. What's your life's dream, Lily? <laughs> what's your dream? Darren? <laughs> well, to Lily. Oh my to Lily. gosh. Um, I, my dream in life. Well, I, this is crazy. I mean, I never. You I got it. It's so, it's so interesting because I still see myself with so much further to go. So it's so wonderful and interesting for I don't it's just it's 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 very lovely for you to say that because I still see there being so much further for me to grow and learn and to do and um throughout the beginning of my career I had the honor of working with women like Julia Roberts and Sandra Bullock Annette Benning, Jennifer Connelly like these incredible women that also like brought their kids to set and had an amazing family life, um, as well as an incredible career. And they served as such an inspiration to me in so many ways within the industry, but also as just a human being and someone that, that w wants all the things and with prioritization and working hard can have a family and a career. And I feel like that's something that I one day also hope to be able to have. Thank you for being here. All right. Thank you so much. So striped shirt in the back. Let's oh. take a I don't even have one of those. And you have quite the gentleman. They were they were Hi. saying. How are you guys? Hi. Um, I actually went to your book tour a few years ago, Lily. Uh, and you were so kind. Oh, make me cry. <laughs> Um, I wanted to ask, I mean, anyone could answer this, but uh, what have you learned about yourself through your character? Ooh. We're getting deep. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting deep. What about, what about Ashley? Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> the yellow. I had to. I knew what happened. Oh, my gosh. So much, I think. Um, I think it's been such an honor for, you know, for all of us, but, like, to go on the journey of... Um, Mindy's character and like trying to like discover who I am too. You know, it, like it was my first time in Paris um, when I went to film season one and just to be in a new place and to um, have to make a home for myself in a place where I didn't know anybody. This was my first best friend there, you know, and it's, um, I think I've, I've, I've learned to kind of take Mindy's advice a little bit um, sometimes and just kind of, I learned how to believe in myself and listen to the, the good voice that's inside my head and my heart and then the good and the good voices around me too. I don't actually know what I'm talking about. I don't know, I'm like, I'm, 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 I'm like, I'm trying not to cry. When you get, when you get, we can, we can get really existential, but I feel like we're like trying to go, but I learned a lot and I'm so grateful. I cannot believe that we have two more seasons and like the people. <laughs> The, the, the people that we are now, the, the women that we are now, the men that we are now, the, you know, like the artists that we are now are vastly different than what we were two years ago when we started. And I can't wait to see how us and the world also continue to change and to grow. And um, that's the end. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we have time for one more. One of my favorite relationships on the show is yours, Emily, with uh, Sylvie. Ooh. And so she's not oh, here, yeah. but I wonder if, yeah. Yeah. if we could hear a couple of uh, Philippine stories. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. I know. And she has that saunter, too. Oh my gosh. I goodness. just can't. Like, I when I, we were shooting in Saint Tropez and I looked over and she's like walking out of the ocean, I was like, Whoa! Like she, she is. It's okay. I didn't understand how different she was from her character until I like feel like I really met Philippine. Because 
we really met each other as Sylvie and Emily. And then her daughter came to set one day and she's like, you know, it's really weird to see my mom being so mean to you because this is just so not her and she's just like earth woman and she's so sweet and, and quirky. she's just quirky. Yeah. And, she, and I was like, mm, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I have never, I'm like, I have never met that woman. I don't know, but like, I, I believe you. That's so, I'm so happy for you. Yeah. Um, and then, <laughs> and then, um, I mean, she was so nice. Yeah. She was nice, but it was like, I didn't, I didn't see that version of her. And then season two, I came back and it was like, I think we all felt so much more settled in who we were as our characters. And I think offset and even in between takes, we were allowing each other to see more of ourselves because we were comfortable in our characters so we could go on set and be them and then come off and be ourselves. And it was so lovely to re-meet her. And we just, she's, she always wants to make sure that I feel comfortable and and nurtured, she's a real nurturer. Um, and I remember for me personally, like planning a wedding and stuff, and she was just like being a mother, which was very, very sweet on set. Um, but she's also just got these looks and these like movements. And great ideas. And the mustache was idea. actually her idea for the dynamite. Really? Scene. Yeah. She was like, you should wear a mustache for half, on your half your face. And I was like, okay. <laughs> she's, she's wonderful. <laughs> always, there's always a little bit of spice on set when yeah. she's there. And when she walked out of the water at Central Bay, oh my gosh. water was freezing and the gravel was like glass. And I thought this is gonna be a disaster, but she just like came out like, you know, Goddess. Venus. Yeah. And the, it was just like, I was like, that's uh, amazing. It's the saunter for me. I've, I, and I thought to myself like, is that written? Like that she just hits you with that zinger and then <laughs> saunters off? Or is that her? Is that, well, that Philippine? I mean, no, she brought that to the role. I mean, she's, you know, such a very um, well-known, respected French actress. And she, to me, she brings so much of that French sophistication mm. to the show. And it's like, you know, and, and she's, she <laughs> really, yeah, the hands. She really is amazing. And you know, one thing that's also, to me, that's, that's amazing we take for granted is that all, the, all, the, all of our French actors, including these mm. guys, I mean, English is not their first language, and they're acting in English. I mean, just effortlessly, and it just blows me away. Yeah. Really does. Um, yeah, and it's like, it's nice to also give them the opportunity to act in French, and, <laughs> and see how it feels different, you know, see how the, the, the sort of, uh, how it changes from seeing them seeing the dialogue in French when, when they're speaking to each other in French versus in English when they're speaking to Emily. And it sort of changes their personality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, with that, thank you. Thank you, thank thank you so you much. I, I just, I just, oh. I'd like to say, <laughs> oh no, I, I just wanted to take this occasion because with the pandemic and, and everything that happened after season one, we didn't really have uh, the occasion except with uh, social media and everything to meet the, all the people that have been connecting with our work. And so um, I take this occasion because you're all packed together. I want to, to thank you for uh, the respect, all the positive messages you've been sending our way, yes. all the love, uh, and, and this is our fuel. We wouldn't be here without all of you. And, and it's such a pleasure to come back to set and to give the best of ourselves, to give you something to escape to. And, uh, and so thank you, I think on behalf of uh, yes, all of us. Yes, thank you. Thank you yes. so much for the love.